This is the sixth video on inverse Laplace. The focus is going to be on the use of MATLAB and in particular to compute analytic solutions. We will assume that students are competent on inverse Laplace techniques, certainly using pen and paper for arbitrary transforms and as a way of solving ODEs. And this video is now going to look at how do I use MATLAB to solve the same problem. So instead of using a pen and paper, I want the computer to do it for me because the numeric demands on pen and paper can be a bit tedious and there are also times when I may want to automate my solutions. You will also find that MATLAB is a good tool for validating your own learning. Analytic solutions then. Within MATLAB there is a symbolic toolbox. Now you will need this toolbox in order to duplicate what's covered in the next few slides, but it's standard in the student version of MATLAB. The key commands that this video will focus on are Laplace and I Laplace. And you might think, well, that's fairly obvious what they mean. Laplace means find the Laplace transform. I Laplace, find the inverse Laplace transform. OK. Key point to note here at the bottom is neither Laplace or I Laplace deal explicitly with ODEs. So if you want to do the solutions of ODEs, you use, need to use a, a sleight of hand to make it do it for you. Not a difficult one, but we will demonstrate that in the later slides. First of all then, how do I find the Laplace of a signal? And the basic command in MATLAB is just Laplace, with the corresponding ex signal expressed as a symbolic expression. So you need two things. You need to know how to use Laplace.m, the function, and you need to know how to express things in symbolic variables. Here's a simple example then, and hopefully it will be obvious hereafter. First of all, I need to make a variable symbolic. So that's what that line there does. Oh dear, where, where's that gone? You can see I've written sims t, and that's the MATLAB command for saying, take the variable t and make it symbolic. I then added the command Laplace t. So what that does is it says, right, whatever expression you've given me, and here I've given the expression t. Now be careful, hopefully it's not going to disappear. I've given the expression t. It says, whatever expression you've given in there, I will find the Laplace transform for it. And if that, ex that, that t represents some other expression, as you'll see in a minute, it will interpret that because it will know what variable you've put in it. Here you can see the answer. 1 over s squared, exactly as expected. So the Laplace transform of t, a ramp, is 1 over s squared. A second example, and this one will begin to make it slightly clearer. So you'll see in this particular case, I've used an expression e to the minus 2t. So I've said find the Laplace of e to the minus 2t. So the symbolic variable is t. I have to find that in the first line. And then I've written a function um, expressed in terms of this symbolic variable t, and that function here is exp minus 2t. And unsurprisingly, you'll know this already, there's the answer, 1 over s plus 2. All right, a final example. I, I thought it might do that. I can't get rid of these red lines in a hurry now, unfortunately. So in this particular case, I've given a slightly more complicated expression. You can see it says Laplace of x minus 5t times sine of 3t. So that's quite a complicated one. But you'll see, again, it's come out with the answer as 3 divided by s plus 5 all squared plus 9, exactly as you've expected. So hopefully you can see what the Laplace tool does. You enter the expression as the function of a symbolic variable. And then the Laplace will tell you what the equivalent Laplace transform is. Now, MATLAB does allow you to use different variable names, but I would suggest that you stick with T and S to avoid confusing yourself. If you want to know more about this, the best thing to do is go onto MATLAB and type help Laplace. But for basic courses, what's just been shown on that single slide is probably as much as you will need. Now, what about inverse Laplace? Here, we assume the expression is symbolic and has a valid inverse Laplace. Again, I'm going to recommend you use the variable s 
to avoid confusion, but Isleplus will work with whatever variable name you give it. So here's another simple example. You can see what we've done in the first line is we've said, let's make s a symbolic variable. And then in the second line, I've defined a, trans, uh, a Laplace transform, g equals 1 over s plus 4. So that's now a symbolic function, g. Um, it doesn't have to be a Laplace transform. And as far as MATLAB is concerned, it's just a symbolic expression where s is the symbolic variable. However, if I put it into this function i Laplace, then what MATLAB does is it says, whatever symbolic variable you've put in here, I'm going to pretend that's the equivalent of s. And I will do the corresponding inverse Laplace. Now, clearly, the inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 4 is e to the minus 4t. Now, here is where MATLAB is, is a bit naughty. I'm not quite sure why. You'll notice it's written 1 over e to the plus 4t, which, of course, is e to the minus 4t. And for some reason, it likes to put um, exponentials with negative exponents in the denominator and use a positive exponent. Different example, then. Here you'll see I've defined f to be 3 over s plus 5 all squared plus 9. So I've now done i Laplace of f. And what do you get? Sine 3t divided by exponential of 5t, which, of course, if I write it over here, is e to the minus 5t sine 3t. So again, i Laplace has done what you wanted. And then a third example. Sorry, the red's getting in the way here. You'll see q. I've given a pretty nasty q um, at the top here. q equals s squared plus 3s minus 1, all divided by s times s squared plus 5s plus 6. You say, oh, yeah, it's quite a, quite a nasty one. You, you can see the, uh, the q here. And if I said to you, do the inverse of plus of that on pen and paper, you'd say, oh, do I really have to? But yeah, I can do it. Stick it into Laplace, I Laplace Q, and there you can see the answer at the bottom. 3 over 2 times x of 2t, which of course is 3 over 2 e to the minus 2t, minus 1 over 3 times x of 3t, which of course is a third e to the minus 3t, minus 1 over 6. So again, I Laplace has done what you need. How do you deal with transfer functions then? So assuming a student knows that an output signal is given by y of s equals g of s times u of s, then all you need to do is construct y of s explicitly. OK, so they are constructed explicitly before using i Laplace. So we've got an example here for you. You'll notice again, I've defined first my symbolic variable as s. I've defined the corresponding input. Here it's a step, 1 over s. I've defined my transfer function. There it is g equals 3 over s plus 1 times s plus 2. And then the important step is I've defined y explicitly. y equals g times u. And then I can use i Laplace in the normal way to find the corresponding y. And there you can see at the bottom 3 over 2 e to the minus 2t minus 3 e to the minus t plus 3 over 2. Again, recognizing that MATLAB's put the exponentials in the denom denominator. So if you want them in the numerator, don't forget to change the sign of the exponent. Here's a question to try then. A system has an input signal u of t equals sine 0.90 and the model below. Use MATLAB to determine the corresponding output as a function of time and plot this. And this is the sort of thing you might want to do in order to check work that you've got in a tutorial sheet. So there you can see the ODE, 4 dq dt plus 2q equals 6u, and u equals sine 0.90, and we're assuming q of 0 is 0 to keep life easy. First thing to do then is to express this in Laplace transforms, which was covered in the previous video. So q of s equals 6 over 4s plus 2 times u of s, and you could if you wanted, if you knew your tables, write down u of s here. Um, I'm not going to use that, but it's here for completeness. The only thing I really need is this. So that's the definition of my transfer function. And in fact, if I use blue, my transfer function is this bit here. What's the relationship between Q and U? <coughs> and what's my input signal? That's there. So these two bits in blue are the bits I'm going to use. And here's the corresponding code. So see, first of all, I've given myself two symbolic variables, S and T. I'm playing on the safe side here because I think I'll need both. Step number two, I've said, OK, 
please can you tell me what the Laplace transform is for my input signal? My input signal has been given in the time domain. I really don't want to go and look at my table. Just do it for me. So here you see u equals Laplace of sine 0.9 times t. I've made sure that t is symbolic, so Laplace works fine. And that will give you the correct u of s. I've not displayed it here, but you can easily check if you want. I've then said, what's my transfer function given as? Here it is, g equals 6 over 4 times s plus 2. And again, you'll notice I was careful to make sure s was symbolic, so that when I write this g, MATLAB says, fine. Next, I define y as g times u. Then I use i Laplace to find y of t from y of s. And the final two lines, which are covered more in the next video, look at what do I need to do to plot. And you'll notice I've got plot t against y of t. Here's the plot. You can see what the system looks like. So in summary, we've demonstrated that computing Laplace and an analytic inverse Laplace of a signal are straightforward in MATLAB. The key thing here is we've focused on analytic inverses. Can you find me the expression as a function of time? You do require access to the symbolic toolbox to do, use these two functions. Transfer functions and corresponding relationships need to be entered explicitly. So if you know that you've got some form of relationship y equals g times u, you may need to enter g explicitly as a function of s, as you know what g is, and then calculate y explicitly by writing y equals g times u. I would advise that you use variables s and t to avoid confusion, because MATLAB will allow you to use whatever variables you like, and uh, if you're not careful, you will quickly get mixed up with what's going on.